Hello everybody, this is Lollipop Boy one I'm L.E. here today and welcome to another episode of Lollipop Speed Art. So now we are doing the Daughters of Alice, um, Princess Alice, Grand Duchess of Hesse, and the four daughters include Empress Alexandra, which we'll get to in a bit. So first off we have Victoria. Now Victoria was Alice's oldest daughter, oldest child of the family, and she was 15 when Alice died of diphtheria and whatnot. And yes, I had a hard time doing Victoria because she has like such a unique like facial structure. Like it's it's hard to describe it. And I don't think she was that pretty at all. But that's just my opinion there. But Victoria was born on Easter Sunday, 1863, in Windsor, in UK, in front of Queen Victoria. And she helped her mother in the soup kitchens during the Franco-Prussian War, because we know Alice was a devoted nurse and a human, probably an earlier depiction of a humanitarian. So before I continue on, all the pieces are up on my Deviant Art, and as for Victoria here, I based her outfit on this photograph right here from 1878 when she was around 15 years old. So, continuing on with um, the history, Victoria became a second month mother to her younger siblings after Alice died from diphtheria, her younger sister Marie died of diphtheria, and her younger brother died of hemophilia. And as we all know, Alice was a carrier, unfortunately. And against the um, opposition from her father, she married Louis of uh, Battenberg, which would later become Mountbatten in 1884 after mourning for Prince Leopold, her uncle, and Alice's younger brother after he passes away from illness. And um, from basically his health deteriorated and also um, so supposedly her father remarried around the same time she got married so that was interesting and while she was in Malta with Louis uh, she contracted typhoid and Louis himself nursed her back to health and before the first world war she and her daughter Louise tried warning Alexandra about rescue in and as we all know, Alexandra did not heed the warnings properly, and Victoria and her daughter made it back on the last ship back to Britain. So, she would pass away at 87 on the Isle of Wight in 1960, and she was actually concerned about her family members fighting on both sides of the world wars. Melissa, she, she was like more neutral in a sense, but she was worried about both sides. So her second daughter Louise became Queen of Sweden after basically the consort to um, Gustav Adolf after um, he lost uh, Crown Princess Margaret a cousin of Victoria which we'll get to in a bit and through her eldest daughter Alice who would have mental health issues she would become a guardian to Prince Philip who would become Queen Elizabeth II's husband, and yes, he's still alive today. Now, we come to our first Russian Grand Duchy, um, married into um, the Romanov family here. We have Elizabeth of Hesse, nicknamed Ella. She was born the 1st of November, 1864, and she was considered charming, friendly, and she was considered one of the most beautiful ladies in Europe. And she had many suitors and admirers from family members, including, oh, oh that's right, Kaiser Wilhelm II was a suitor, and he wrote a lot of love poems and all that shiz, but thankfully Elizabeth rejected him. <laughs> It would be Grand Duke Sergei of Russia that would win her heart, and yes, they were childhood friends, they shared their love for art and religious faith, and she willingly converted to Russian Orthodoxy, which is basically Orthodox Catholic. They would marry in 1884, and that was 
again, ironically, the same time as when Nikki and Alex would meet for the first time when Nikki was 16 and Alex was 12. And so she, again, she converted um, voluntarily and sincerely, and she took the name Elizabeth Fyodorovna. And she made a good impression on the Romanovs and the Russian people. And the sad news was, although she she also loved children, but she and Sergei never had children, supposedly some speculate that they decided to re- remain celibate for the rest of their lives. But they did become foster parents to um, Sergei's younger brother's children, which included um, Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna. And by the way, the dress here, the, my take is based on a photograph of her from 1894, which is, would be right there. So, with Elizabeth, continuing on, after Sergei was assassinated, after expelling Jews from Moscow, and even Elizabeth warned them that God would punish them, she sold off all her possessions used the pro- and used the proceeds to open up a convent, which was known as the Convent of St. Ma- Martha and Mary, and became its abbess, so she became a nun, as we all know. So she also opened up a hospital, pharmacy, chapel, and an orphanage, and she worked her and her nuns worked tirelessly to help the sick and poor of Moscow. She also was she was also killed by the Bolsheviks after she and other members of the family were thrown down a mine shaft, had grenades thrown at them, and then set ablaze by brushwood after they initially survived the fall of grenade bomb and the grenade bombs. So and she was heard singing a hymn. So she went out singing. She was only 53, and she was canonized in 1981. Her remains were taken to Jerusalem. So, yeah, I didn't do Elizabeth as a nun. But continuing on, we have Princess Irene of Hesse, later Princess of Prussia. Now, according to Alice, when she wrote to Victoria, um, she said that Irene wasn't pretty. Honestly, I think she was cute. She has a cute um, disposition to her. And she was born in the summer of 1866. And I based this outfit from a photograph of her with Alex in 1885. So this is second bustle error right here. And I made the dress um, cream co- a dark cream color as you would see later on. So with Irene, she was not as pretty as Elizabeth. But she did have a pleasant, even disposition. So she was easygoing, friendly. She married her first cousin, Prince Henry of Prussia. Yes, the second son of Queen Victoria's eldest daughter, Empress Vicky. And they had a happy marriage. But unfortunately, she was a carrier of hemophilia too. So two of her sons suffered from the disease. One of them... Waldemar lived to be 54, who was the oldest, and the youngest, Henry, passed away after a bump on the head at age 4. Wilhelm, her middle child, moved to Costa Rica and started a banana and coffee plantation. And I'm serious about that, too. <laughs> so, really, um, she sided with Kaiser Wilhelm in the First World War, but after Alex and her family were assassinated by the Bolsheviks, and in the 1920s, Anna Anderson came about claiming that she was Anastasia. Um, Irene was sure that when she met her, she was sure Anna Anderson was not her niece at all. And as we all know, they, uh, everyone perished. Like Victoria, her oldest sister, Irene did live to be 87, which was interesting um, really, yeah, so I did make the dress cream colored, and I added, like, my own little style to it, but it was basically her by herself, but again, all the daughters, I forgot to mention, all the children of Princess Alice were lived, raised to live, they were raised in a modest household, they learned how to make their own beds, basically like a normal Victorian family at the time and the other thing was that 
I think I mentioned this in the five daughters video that Alice chose to breastfeed her kids and Victoria called, uh, Queen Victoria called Alice a cow. But here is um, Irene finished. And now we come to the famous of the four Hess sisters, Hessen sisters. We have Alex also known as Empress Alexandra Theodorovna. And she was six at the time of her mother and sister's passing. She was a very joyful child, happy. She was nicknamed Sunny. She, still, she was still called Sunny by Nicholas. But after the passing of her mother and sister, she became more reserved, shy, and sober. So a lot of people say, Alex never smiled in her photographs. Um, there are a couple photographs of her in her adulthood where she was smiling and all that stuff, but it was more like she was more sober. So again, for Alex, I based it off of a photograph of her from 1898 after she became Empress of Russia and also after she had Tatiana. And speaking of the Grand Duchesses, she is the mother of Otma and also Alexei who would also suffer hemophilia and something I also learned that she also had a bunch of health issues like sciatica and a lot of documentaries make her out to be like this overbearing helicopter mom trying to shelter her kids from the outside world and she also relied on Rasputin to um, relieve her son's suffering from the bleedings and with Alex she seemed like a very caring mother she and Nicholas were caring <laughs> devoting parents and I don't think either of them were ever fit to be Tsar and Tsarina and Alex had little time to prepare to be Tsarina like had some time in Russia it, it, because remember, Alexander III died before Nikki and Alex were able to get married and had time to learn Russian and all that stuff. And also, Nikki and Alex spoke English to each other. It was their best common language. And unfortunately, she did die in the revolution. She and her family were assassinated by the Bolsheviks at the Apatyev house. And... Later, the remains were exhumed in 1979 and then exhumed fully in 1991. Well, the remains were found in 1979 and then exhumed in 1991 when they were DNA tested and confirmed to be the last family, the last um, family, the, the, um, the royal family. So, also something I learned, I know it's Wikipedia or whatever, but anyways, something I learned was that Alex, may have had a miscarriage in 1896 after the coronation and she may have had a phantom pregnancy in 1902 that's something interesting there um anyways another thing was that she was also oh, had like a love-hate relationship with maria fyodorovna the her mother-in-law but that's another story for another time i think i mentioned it in the um, Alexandra and Dogmore episode. But anyways, all these pieces are up on my DeviantArt. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to like this video. Follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, and DeviantArt. All linked down in the description below. I'll see you next time. Peace!